Field. I'm your host, Mr. Justin Brown, and this is Atlantic Canada's only paranormal radio broadcast, The Unified Field. Thanks for joining us on this very special edition of The Unified Field. Not only because we have Mr. Michael Cremo in the house being interviewed here, but because this is our very first live Ustream episode. If you go to www.ustream.tv, forward slash channel, forward slash UFR. You can watch the show live for the first time in history of the unified field. So go there, ustream.com, forward slash channel, forward slash UFR. And join us. There's all kinds of stuff going on here tonight. I've got about a million stories. There's always, there are always a lot of stories coming out in the world in regards to the paranormal and ufology. Always. And tonight is no exception. This week is no exception. Uh, again, we're, we're daunted with uh, uh, all kinds of stories from around the world that I'm going to share with you guys tonight that you might not be aware of because this is cutting-edge radio. You come here because I'm a local source for all your paranormal goods. What are you going to hear tonight? Well, you're going to hear that Michael Cremer interview, obviously. But check this out. Spending Bill Fund's NASA mission to the moon. Uh, Suzanne Taylor's movie, One on Earth, gets an amazing review in the New York Times. And I'll read my review of the movie, too, that I put in the New York Times. We've got an Irish astronomer that says he successfully tracked UFOs and says that he can now predict when they'll next appear. E.T. history and ancient stones, according to... Uh, Michael Tellinger, if I'm bang on, yeah, good, just got to check my sources there, it's always key, life on Mars, scientists discover buried treasure, an underground ice lake, Siberian dead alien of fake, Jed, J. Edgar Hoover's FBI took UFO seriously, I've got news on the new FBI records site, The Vault. FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Uh, they have a brand new site just released earlier this month about all all kinds of stuff. And one of them is Unexplained Phenomenon. I'll go into that. We're going to talk about Harry Potter and UFOs. Video catches something strange in the Temecula sky, California. Alien trees might just look black. UFO observed in the... In the I, I've tried to say this so many times. The Sochi skies or the Sochi skies? Not sure. In Russia, rare exoplanet has Star Wars twin sunset. Dangerous asteroid to pass close to Earth November 8th, 2011. A university professor calls for a congressional UFO hearing. And this is old news now, but it's just been released 
over the last little while about a MUFON star team that experiences a close encounter of the third time, of the third kind, <laughs> during an investigation. So, we've got a jam-packed show. It's amazing. And we've got some great music. And if, if you don't know who that was in the intro, it was, of course, M83 from Montreal. If I'm wrong, send me an email. I'm pretty bang on. I had Saturdays equals youth, so I'm pretty positive that's a Montreal band. Also, we have our, our first call-in in the history of UFR last Saturday, well, two weeks ago, a caller that talked about Room 224, I believe, and some kind of ghostly activity, and I interviewed the the Halifax Institute for the Paranormal, and I did not ask about that room. <laughs> so, sorry, I totally forgot. Like, as soon as the interview was done, I realized what had happened. So, if you're listening, caller, might have been Mike or Matt. I apologize for that. And that'll be on an upcoming show of the Unified Field. The H-I-P-R, Halifax Institute for Mar Paranormal Research. Big show, very big show here in beautiful coastal Halifax, Nova Scotia with a lot of stuff to talk about. And I don't want to waste any more time. So I want to get down to the nitty gritty and jump right in here and talk about some stuff. So without further ado, let us start this beautiful show. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, you are. Yours truly on the UFR. I just received the new MUFON journal in the mail, and I'm pretty excited about it. And the cover story is about Travis Walton. And Travis Walton, of course, I wanted to talk a lot about the MUFON journal, but I've got a lot. I didn't even mention this in the intro, all the stories that I have in here. Can you guys see this? Yeah, that's the new one. Members only. It's an elite club. Don't worry about it. JJ. Um, pretty cool, though. Travis Walton's in there. He, he's re-releasing his book, Fire in the Sky, because of uh, some information he wanted to share to the rest of the world about his experience and some updates about what the other fellows are doing in the world now and uh, the future of Travis Walton. Apparently, when he decided to rewrite his book, he noticed that copies of his book were going for hundreds of dollars online because there, were only, there was only a limited run. So now he's going to re release another another book revealing all kinds of facts that you may not be aware of. But if you follow the phenomenon, you probably do know all about it. Uh, you know, he's he's been on several media broadcasts from all over the world, including Open Minds, uh, among others, talking about how the movie that we're all very familiar with that stars, I think it's D.B. Sweeney, and uh, Dude from Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Uh, ah, what's that guy's name? Patrick. Jeez, I used to love that guy. Anyway, um, yeah, the movie. I mean, Hollywood's known to embellish the stories. Uh, you know, to, to evoke entertainment value. And uh, Travis Walton wants to set the record straight with this new book. And he does that. Like, for instance, in the movie, you know, you see this craft and it's dirty and it's dingy and, you know, it's very organic. Uh, but in reality, it was very clean, very sterile. And there was nothing like what was portrayed in the movie. Um, also, in the actual incident, he can't really confirm this or not. He, he, you know, it's a possibility that um, this is, you know, could be a byproduct of dreams he had had over the years. But, I mean, he says that he wasn't just approached by little gray aliens in the UFO. It was, it was a bigger picture than that. There were actually human-looking individuals. Three of them... If I'm, Yeah, three of them. And one of them had, a sp had like, a helmet on, a, ha a space helmet. And it looked very Nordic. Very similar to the Nordic 
uh, aliens that you hear about. You know, there's certain species you hear about a lot. You know, you got your mantis, you got your greys, uh, you got your Nordics, you know, which falls in with the Pleiadians. You've got like your uh, your reptilians. You got your Sasquatch type guys, right? Your little blue dwarf type type characters. Uh, so they were just like that particular species, and he was taken out of the ship. You know, I, it, and in my opinion, it may have been uh, due to the fact that you know these ETs or CTs, if you're a Mac Tony's fan, uh, recognized that he was in distress. So maybe they offered him an image that was more comforting. But even with those individuals, he was taken off that craft that he was on and into a large hangar with other craft in there. And <clears throat> these individuals put like a gas mask on, on his face and he lost consciousness soon after that. So he goes into all kinds of details of this new book. I'm really excited about it. I, I can't wait to see, I can't wait to read that, that particular reissue. So very exciting, the new MUFON journal. Crypto Terrestrials, like I said, has, a, has a, an introduction of Forward by Nick Redfern who has written a plethora of books. This guy is just incredible. Uh, the latest that I've read, of course, I, I've talked about them several times, Contactees and the NASA Conspiracies. Mac Tony's Crypto Terrestrials, a very elegant piece of writing, very eloquent as well. And he is very intellectual. When you read this book, you, you can sense his deep intellect. His wording is very precise and varied, and he, he not only keeps you informed, but he keeps you interested if you can get yourself past the vast vernacular, which, is, which can be very intimidating to some people, but it's a very interesting read. It's not that big. It was published posthumously, of course, after his, his death, 32 years old, this man passed away.